Next we have Dr. Rama Devi Shekhar. We invite her to present her paper. Dr. Rama Devi Shekhar did her MPhil on Gajifa card play and she holds a doctorate in Sanskrit literature and the title of her thesis is Dream Motif in Tra Sanskrit Literature. She is an alumni of the Kupuswami Shastri Research Institute. She is currently working as an assistant professor of Sanskrit at Sri Shankarlal Sundarbhai Shasun Jain College for Women and also is the director, Center for Excellence, Art and Culture in the same college. She has also worked previously at many prestigious institutions. Uh, she has presented papers in various national and international conferences and also delivered lectures at various institutions. She has many publications to her credit, like a Nellayapa Temple, Tirnal Veli, in the Tatwa Loka Journal 2021, Goddess Kamakshi in Northeast India and Tamil Nadu, International Center for Bengal Arts, Silver, Jubli Silver Jubilee Journal 2019. She has been an organizer for the International Conference on Monthly Language at the Etheraj College for Women in the year 2016. She has assisted in organizing workshop on epigraphs of India in collaboration with Indira Gandhi National Institute for Arts, New Delhi. She has been awarded with the Best Screenplay and Best Story Award for Dr. B. B. Lal, Dawn of Indian Archaeology, Dada Sahib Palke International Film Festival Award, and the Gurukul Fellow, Indian Council for Historical Research. We are proud of Dr. Rama Devi Shekhar. We invite her to present her paper. She would be presenting on the cosmic plan in micro-scale Hindu temple. Shri Guru Namaha. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. It is uh, like a homecoming to homecoming for me. So in this place, uh, for my MPhil, be uh, here. And you know, when I completed my PhD, in the same uh, place I have uh, my Iva also. So this institute has actually mentored me a lot. I owe to Dr. Kameshri Ma'am, Dr. Balas Bhutan sir, and Dr. Vasudevan sir. So in front of the August Church Assembly, I think it is my privilege to my paper. Already uh, Dr. Satyamurthy sir has spoken many things about uh, uh, Shilpa and uh, Agama. And uh, the great personalities like uh, uh, Dr. Agna Sundram sir, Dr. Agna Sundram sir is there. And uh, Dr. Agna sir, the children Kalashilvan also spoke about uh, the plan and uh, columns. So I'm here to put uh, the Cosmos that is about the in connection. Little bit of uh, argument and knowledge I would like to present. Much of uh, the topic has been dealt by Dr. Satyamurthy sir in his early presentation and Dr. Mr. Mansulin Kalisalvan also presented about the Brahadishwara temple. I'll just limit my, due to the paucity of time, uh, considering the other speakers, I will a little bit speak. Next. So when we talk about uh, the temple, or uh, the ground plan. So whenever we enter a temple, the temple uh, in the grand level, or uh, it is called as the microcosm, that is it is uh, Brahmande, that Pindande, Pindande, that Brahmande. So the very shloka, when we uh, start the puja, goes like this. Deho Deva Le Prutta, Jeeva Deva Sanatanaha. The same thing is represented in the temple also. So next. Yeah, so the temple is considered to be the divine uh, body of the Deha of the uh, uh, Murti, Murti. The same thing is represented. Earlier also, uh, Mr. Madhusudan has presented the next one. So the temples are the metaphysical, one second, temples are the metaphysical representation of the cosmos. Whatever is in the Brahmanda that is represented through the form of the temple. So we find that central pillar erected from the heart of the Vastu. Uh, later I'll be showing about the Vastu Purusha Mandala for a few slides. That is the Brahmasthana wherein the Garbhagraha will be erected. Next. 
So uh, when we talk about the Hindu temple, especially we have the Buddhist temple and other temples also. In the Hindu temple, when we talk, the temple structure of a symbolism, once again, it is a symbolism of the past class. So everything in the temple, uh, my mentor used to talk about the, the temple is, each and every part of the temple is considered to be the uh, Devasthana, right from the columns or the pillars, the sculptures. Temple. Next one. So the temple is the link between the physical and uh, physical world of Hanuman, that is the uh, Laukika as well as the Brahmaloka. So that is why when we talk about uh, the Vasu Purusha Mandala or the ground plan, when we say it is graphically, uh, the cosmos is graphically actually drawn. The temples, uh, the foundation of the temples are called as the Vastu Purusha Mandala. Uh, but when we talk about the Hindu architecture, the religious vernacular in the ancient times were based on the geometry of the Vastu Purusha Mandala. So when we talk about the Vastu Purusha Mandala, of course we are all... Uh, uh, much of Sanskritam also, we all know that. So the word Vastu Purusha Mandala, uh, Vas, Vasa, Purusha and Mandala, when we say Vasa is the dwelling place and Purusha is of course the um, universal principle and Mandala means the circle. So according to the Vastu Purusha Mandala, most sacred and typical template of the Hindu temple is the 8.8 grid. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the 64, 18 to 864, and uh, I'm not going to deal about the 9 into 9, 81. So let me take the 64 grade. Next. So eight, why this 8 point grid is very, very important? Why our ancestors, when they built the temple, uh, why they gave much importance to the 8 point grid? So according to the plan, Nowadays, they say that this is the most The next one. Actually, these are called as mandalas. 
the central four square acquired the place of the main deity and the inner ring, uh, I'm talking about the 64 plan. Okay, so the inner ring, the 12 squares from the walls of the Garbhagriha and the next 16 to 28, the Pradakshina Pada, earlier speaker also showed about the Pradakshina Pada, the central division of the square which may permutation and combination become the basic base of the complex structure of the temple in the form of the orthogonal or the chapters of the temple. Therefore, the large squares of a mandala were divided into thousand squares, virtually forming a graph paper for the architect to facilitate and to add a unit at one side and setting back on the other. So, everything was divided, pre-planned, uh, as he was showing the Mandala Pitta and the other places. So, whatever is in the stone, once it is chiseled or you know, carved, you cannot, if you do any mistake, it cannot be changed. So, everything has to be uh, pre-planned, calculated. Next one. So, this is the plan, uh, one uh, sample of a plan. So, when you look into the plan, you can see that it is almost like a human body. So, the human body is represented by the form of the ground plan. You can see the Pradakshina Pada and the Antarala and the Garbhagraha. So, you can see everything is perfect square and the earlier speaker, Dr. Satyamurthy has mentioned from the rectangle to square. When you rectangle is actually two squares. So, when we talk about the end of the each square is actually as a pada to symbolize the special, specific element that can be in the form of the So, uh, one uh, small temple I have taken um, from the Chalukya. So, here it is a 64 grid model called the Brahma Pada, dedicated to the, the Brahman. Uh, the Garbhagraha or the center houses situated in the Brahma Pada, which is the house of the main deity, Garbhasthana. Next one. So, Pradakshina Pada, earlier uh, uh, Mr. Madhusudanan also showed the Pradakshina Pada. So, the, this is called as outer concentric layer of the Brahma Pada. Uh, otherwise, it is called as Devika Pada, signifying the facets of the Devans or Gods, which again surrounded by the next layer, that is Manusha Pada, which is the ambulatory. Next one. So, the outer prakaras, so uh, the earlier speaker also shown many sculpture denoting various uh, stala puranas or the puranic uh, story. So, the three outer padas, the larger temple generally uh, around the inspirational painting, carving, earlier he has shown the Kailasanatha temple. In the production of we have seen the Jalandaram Samhara Murti. So, these carvings and images of the wall reliefs and the temples, images of the different temples depicting the legends from the various uh, epics and the Vedic stories. The illustration of Artha, Kama, Moksha can be found in the embellished carvings and images. So, the people may ask, you know, they may wonder why all these things are depicted when they go to the Kajrao temple and other temples, uh, especially the Orissa temples, they used to ask why all these, the Westerners, they wonder and they ask why all these elements are projected here. So, in order to, uh, through the Artha, Kama, Dharma, the Moksha can be, the four Purusharthas, the fourth one, Moksha can be achieved by all these things. That is why when you leave all these uh, materialistic things only, you can enter inside. That is why in the Prakara, all these elements have been depicted in the form of sculptures. Next one. So, the pillared outer hall, he has shown the Sabha Mandapa. Uh, this, these are called as uh, for meant for the Sabha Mandapa when you say that that uh, Sabha Mandapa is for the various uh, official matters as well as the Sabha Mandapa is used for the um, public lecture hall, etc. And the next one. So, when we uh, come to the Vimana portion, the temple's Vimana, which is uh, uh, always uh, conical or pyramid and other structures also we have, of course, which uh, uh, the superstructure, otherwise it is called as a superstructure, with a domed adhering principle of the concentric squares. Satyamurthy sir's uh, presentation he has shown that square to circle and circle again square. So, the Vimana has all these elements. In the North Indian uh, temple, 
called as Shikara. In our Dravidian temple, it is called as Vimana. So, uh, of course, I'm showing the Vimana, which is uh, symmetrically aligned exactly to the Brahma Pada or the temple, central core of the temple. styles of the Hindu due to the broad geographical, climatic, cultural and historical difference. Uh, the earlier speaker also told due to the climatic changes and different uh, cross connections, cultural connections, each of the temple varies. It is especially significant in the major styles of the Hindu temple and architecture. In the temples, the northern plains and in the southern peninsula, the Hindu temples uh, between the, these two regions have been classified as the Nagara, that is the northern shell, the Dravida or the southern shell. But even though the appearance of the temple different, uh, the basic philosophy that guided their planning and layout was same. Even though we have the structure wise, there are some differences. When, they, when we call something as Amalaka, when we call something as Shikara, they call that as different. The main uh, planning and other manuals are same. Next one. So, of course, uh, I will not uh, tell you which is Veshara and the Dravida. Next one. So, I told you, so whatever is in the Pindanda, that is in the Brahmanda, that comes to the Pindanda. So, our body is also made up of five Bhutas. The temple uh, structure is also made up of five Bhutas or Panchabhuta. So, by earth, it is not only the physical representation of uh, what we the data, that is uh, but uh, the strength of the mind, the steadfastness, the determination, the uninterrupted advancement towards the goal also represents the Prithvi Porsha. And by water or up, it amplifies the cohesive reality which flows into the and also holds all being together. And also it is like a link between each of the each other and uh, to the ultimate reality. And by fire, it does not uh, only mean about the universal energy that is the tejas, but also that radiates the heat and light, but the inner fire that removes the clock of ignorance. So, Agnana Timiran Dasya, our session, hey, our president also, he, when he started the session, he started with the Agnana Timiran Dasya, Jnananjana Shalakaya. So, that is the, uh, the inner fire which uh, removes the ignorance and destroys all our doubts and allows the truth to shine despite all the obstacles. By air or vayu, it not only implies the rarefied force that exists in the universe, but the energy that allows uh, digestion, removes waste, and ensures the circulation in the human body. It regulates thoughts in our mind through steady breathing. By space or akasha, it means everything that encompasses the mind which is the vessel to receive all the impression, the heart which accepts love. Next one. Same uh, Panchabhutas are represented in each of the temple. When I say Panchabhuta, I uh, don't think that I'm going to talk about the Panchabhuta stalas. In each and every temple, we have the Panchabhutas. So the Prithvi, of course, the temple, and we enter into the sanctum or the Garbhagraha, when they show the Deeparadhana, that is the Agni, the next one. So, so, so this shows Akasha, next one, the Vajastamba Aro, So the water, that is the Tirtha, the temple tank as an water, but the level visible. So whenever we enter a temple, especially if you all uh, uh, I think you have could have visited the Tiruvarur temple, the Tiruvayara temple. When we enter the Tiruvayara temple, so there is a thing, right? Chatusagara Pariyatam. So as we enter the temple, see the, the huge uh, tank on the sides of the temple. When you cross the 
Chatur Sagara. Actually, you can be simple. Okay, so next one. So, thus it can be that elements in the creation form the fundamental unit of the secret of the entire universe, and the deeper understanding of the elements, it signifies and subtle effects is the key to the leading an ideal life of peace, prosperity, and eternal happiness. It is the science that guides the design and construction of the buildings in harmony with laws of nature and the universe. Both design concept deals with the use of force or the life energy and the use of five elements of nature. Next one. So, these are the Panchabhuta Stalas. Next one. So, in our um, human body, when we have this uh, Vishuddhi, Anahata, Swadhisthana, Manipura and Mooladhara Chakras, which uh, talks about the space, wind, fire, water and earth. Next one. So, in the picture, all these uh, chakras are in the same line. Same wise, in this, uh, when you look into the map from the Kalahasti to this uh, Chidambaram, the, all these uh, temples are in the same longitude, that is 79.41. It means that all of them are in a straight line. Next one. So, why, uh, why should we learn, uh, know about the Agamas? Why should I know? When I enter the temple, that's all uh, I see the uh, Swami and I get Prasadam. That's all. Why should I know about all these Agamas? The question arises. So, without a proper study and understanding of the Agama, one cannot fathom the greatness of the temple design or he cannot understand the reasoning of the peculiarities regarding the sculptural positioning within the temple complex. Next one. So, this is the great uh, Rajarajeshwara, Brahadishwara temple. The entire design of the Rajarajeshwara is guided by the principle down, uh, principle of the Makutagama or Mukutagama. Next one. So, the Brahadishwara temple, uh, we, where we, it is, um, according to the Adamic uh, the terminology, they say that it is the Manusha Linga variety, which is uh, uh, consecrated by men, and the Linga Pita is called as Padma Pita variety, and which is the uh, ratio of 3 is to 5 to the width of the Garbhagraha, and this belongs to the Uttama Uttama Linga, that is foremost of the Lingas, and according to the Makutagama or Mukutagama, the Supreme of the Lord is called as Parama, Paramananda Tandava. When we see into the space, when I showed you that uh, space portion, that is the Paramananda Tandava, uh, that is why he is called as the Adal Vallan. Satimurthi sir also showed the, the picture of Adal Vallan. So he is invoked in by the, uh, as the Brahadishwara Linga or the Adal Vallan, dancing above the nine principles, that is the Nava Tattvas. Next one. You can see uh, Brahma portion, Vishnu, Rudra, Mahesha, Sadashiva, Parabindu, Paranada, Parashakti, Parashiva, and Paramananda Tandav Murti. Next one. So, according to this uh, Mukutagama, Makutama, the space or the vacuum that is in the main linga, which is uh, considered as a dancing form of the Shiva, that is why he has kept the, when he understood the principle of Agama. So, based on that only, he, the Raja Raja, he kept the idol of Adal Valla. So, that is the Paramayananda Tandav Murti. The Linga inside the Garbhagraha, that is in the Sanctum, represents the manifestation of the dancing form. So, he has, based on this principle only, he has uh, 108 uh, Karana Shilpas also he has sculpted. Next one. So, Dandrithi, uh, I told you, Dandrithya Karanas are based on this. That is why he has kept uh, in the Vimana portion and uh, all over the uh, entire complex of the temple, you can see the Dhritta um, uh, Murtis. Next one. So, the Rupa Rupa, when we talk about the Agama principle, so the Linga is called as Rupa Rupa. Sometimes it is firm and also sometimes it is formless. And the first, uh, and the, he is the very first manifestation. It is said to be the Pancha Brahma or the manifestation of the Supreme uh, Shiva in the figurative form. That is, uh, the Pancha Mukha are represented by Tapurusha, Agora, Sadhya Jata, Vamadeva, and Ishana. Next one. 
So the panch, uh, in the Garbhagraha, when we see the Panchabrahma Avarana, that is, I'm going to talk about the five Avaranas. So in the Tatpurusha, Aghora, Sadhya, Jata, Vamadeva, these five are worshipped in the Mula Murta itself in the respective direction, that is in the five Avaranas. All other deities which, uh, which form the path of the various enclosures are known as Avarana Devata. So why this uh, Brahadishwara temple uh, inspires so many people? Because according to the Agamic uh, principle, so all the Avaranas are represented in the particular uh, Murta forms and also the Ashtadiktalas, later I will be showing, next slide. So the Devatas are as per the Avarana, the Garbhagraha, which is followed by the eight uh, Ashtavidyeshwara, Ashtaganeshwara, Dasha Lokapala, and we have the Dasha Ayuga Purushas representing the Ayugas or the weapons. Next one. So when we look into the plan, the Ashtavidyeshwara, there are, uh, these are depicted by the three eyes and four hands sporting the axe or uh, the parachute, Rishula, Abhaya and Varada Mudras. In the east we can see the Ananta, the southeast Trimurti, south direction or the Dakshina, you can see the Sukshma, southwest Shrikanta, west Shivottama, northwest Shikandhi and the north Ekanetra and the northeast Ekarudra. Next one. So Ashtavidyeshwara, I told you, um, they may be not in the correct position also. What are comfortable, I can, I have adjusted in this picture. The next one. Ashtaganeshwara. So when we enter the temple, you can see the Subramanya, Ambika, Chandikeshwara, Ganesha, of course, the Nandi or the Vrishabha. When you enter inside the Mahakala, you can see. So these are the Ashtaganeshwara. Next one. The Nandikeshwara and the Mahakala. The next one. So this is the Mahavrishabha, the Vahana, next one. So Chandikeshwara and Ambika, next. So Ashtalokapalas, uh, uh, when we talk about the 64 grid, the Vastu Purusha Mandala, so in the inner circle we have the east direction Indra, southeast Agni, south Yama, southwest Nirti, west Varuna, northwest Vayu, north Soma and northeast Ishana. These are represented in the temple complex. Next one. And the Dasha Ayuda Purushas. What are the Dasha Ayuda? Vajra, Shakti, Dhanda, Kadga, Pasha, Ankusha, Gada, Prishula, Padma and Chakra. So each of the Dwara, the Palaka, the outer, when you, as soon as you enter the temple, you can see the huge uh, sculpture of the Dwara Palas. Each of the Dwara Pala will be holding each of the Ayudas mentioned here. Next time when you go to the temple, kindly check, cross check with me. So Vajra, Shakti, Danda, Tadga, Pasha, Ankusha, Gada, Trishula, Padma and Chakra. So I have uh, given in the representation where are the other Murtas also, right from the Ardhanarishwara to Alingana Chandrasekhara Murti. The next one. Some of the Ayuda Purusha, some sculptures, so that when you uh, visit next time, you will be able to see the uh, uh, Trishula and the Parashu, and uh, Vajra and Shakti. So, this is all I want to share. So, uh, of course, uh, Abram, uh, Mr. Anna Sundram sir is there to explain us about all these Agamas. I'm not an expert, I'm just a beginner. Whatever I understood, I have shared. So, uh, whatever uh, mistake is there, kindly bear with me. Thank you.